Hey everybody, what's up? This is the uh, first Jamsville live stream ever. So whoever's in here, welcome. Um, we're gonna be talking about something that I think is really, really, really important in the stream, which is ear training. Um, and one thing that I always tell like all of my students and people who I talk to, um, about like just my experience going to music school and stuff like that is that ear training is really like the most valuable and important skill I think that I ever got from going to music school. Um, and I really didn't like know that was going to be the case beforehand. Um, but it's turned out to be such a practically useful skill. Like being able to go to a gig and learn a song like right on the spot or be able to hear ideas that I want to play my solos before I play them. Um, so yeah, and I haven't done a video on ear training yet. Actually, one of my students suggested maybe I do some kind of a live stream talking about ear training. So here I am uh, doing it. So hopefully you all learned something from this. And uh, if you haven't done any ear training before, like in your entire life, then this is going to be a good place for you to start because I'm just going to start from basically the beginning where um, I think that someone who hasn't done it before uh, will be able to really get a grasp over some fairly simple things and simple exercises that you can do. And uh, by the way, if you're here watching, I see there's about four people in here right now. Uh, say hi in the chat, please. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So the basis for the way that I teach ear training and I've learned ear training myself is something called the solfege system. Now, if you've never heard of the solfege system, you probably have. Uh, but it's essentially taking the major scale and assigning a syllable to each of the notes in the major scale. So in the major scale, you have seven notes. And if I played a C major scale, it'd sound like this. So to, to hear that we can use to uh, play melodies and hear melodies. And uh, be able to do this not only uh, really easily, but in a much faster way than a lot of other sort of introductions to ear training. For example, some of you who have approached this topic before may have seen these things where you like memorize intervals and for each interval you use like a song. So for, for example, one off the top of my head, is uh, for like a perfect fourth. You have, I think it's Here Comes the Bride. So if you know the song, Here Comes the Bride, it goes like, here comes the bride, here comes the bride. You know, it keeps going, going. But basically it's just the first two notes of the song. Da -da. You know that that's a perfect fourth. Now there's a big problem in my opinion with uh, with that type of way of learning. And that is, there's just too many steps involved in the process. Like it's not going to be practically useful for you to, <laughs> to be able to be listening to a piece of music or trying to learn it on the spot or transcribe a solo or whatever, and be able to just sit there and be like, uh, it's this song and this song that you'd have like 80 million <laughs> different songs that you're trying to think of all at the same time. Uh, so we really need a, a way that we can just know what the intervals are, just know what they sound like so that you can recall them on command. And that's it. Just like any of the other things that we know how to do, just like, you know, how to brush your teeth or something. You don't have to think about like how you move the toothbrush. We want to be able to do the same thing with intervals and the solfege system is going to help us do it. So if you're sitting at home watching this, just uh, I'm going to sing a couple times the major scale using solfege system, and I will uh, play along with it, too, so that, hey, Jamie, what's up? Hey, Brandon, welcome to the stream, first Jamesville live stream. 
Very glad to have you here. Uh, we got five people. This is pretty awesome. Uh, I, I was half expecting to have zero people, so I'm very happy about this. Okay, so, and if you're too embarrassed to sing, maybe just sing quietly. I know some people feel self-conscious about singing, but this is not about being a singer, just so you know. The, uh, this is about training your ears, and the best way, hands down, for you to be able to hear anything is to sing it, because you can't sing it if you can't hear it. Period. You just can't. They have all kinds of apps and stuff of recognizing intervals. Those are all good. It's not going to hurt you. But if you can't sing something, or sorry, if you can't hear it, then you can't sing it. So if you can't sing it, you're probably not hearing it correctly. It's not so much a matter of like not being a um, Freddie Mercury or something. <laughs> like you don't need to be the best singer in the entire world to do this stuff. So I'm just going to sing it a couple times so you can hear it. And then the next part of the stream is going to be um, doing some interval recognition using the system, and I'll explain how to do this. So just sounds like this. This is the C major scale in solfa. So do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So it, I'll play it a couple more times. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. I'll play it going downwards. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. And now I'll sing it without the guitar. So like, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. So uh, if you're familiar, by the way, with the movie The Sound of Music, then you probably know the system. And a lot of people learn it in school. Cool. So now let's start some interval recognition and some singing. And I'll give you some tips on how to sing these intervals. Now, the first thing we're going to start with is singing intervals starting from Do. So basically like this, Do, Re. So that'd be the first smallest interval from Do. It's just Do to Re. Do, Re. Now, that's a major second interval. And if you have a piece of paper or something open, and you don't know the intervals in the major scale, this might be a good time to get out a piece of paper and start writing them down and start memorizing them because we're going to go through each one of them. And again, you're going to hear them, which is going to really, really make this information stick very well. So we got do to re, which is the first note in the scale to the second note in the scale. Now, the next one that we're going to have is do to me. So we're going to go straight from do, skip re, and go to me. So do, me. So again, we're uh, going from do, skipping re, going to me. This is a major third interval. So we know it's a third interval because it's the third note in the key, the third note in the scale. One, two, three, do, re, me. OK, so the next one we're going to have is do to fa which is a perfect fourth. So that's going to sound like this. Do, fa, do, re, mi, fa, do, fa. That's a perfect fourth. And again, we're thinking of this all within the context of the solfege system and the scale rather than some, some kind of song. Um, so we'll keep going. Uh, the next one's going to be do to sol. So that's the first note in the scale to the fifth note. So it's going to sound like this. Do, sol, do, sol, do, re, mi, fa, sol, do, sol. Now, it's going to start getting a little tricky because the wider the intervals get, the more notes in between you need to hear in order to sing or hear the interval accurately. So that was a perfect fifth interval. So, so far we've covered major second, do to re. We've covered major third, do to me. We've covered perfect fourth, which is do to fa. And then we covered perfect fifth, which is do to sol. Now, next one's going to be do to la. So do la, do la, do re mi fa sol la. 
this interval is a major sixth. This is the sixth note in the scale we're singing. We're singing from the first note to the sixth note. So again, so far, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and major sixth. So do la is the major sixth. And the last interval, actually second to last interval, we're going to cover is do all the way up to t. And that sounds like this. Do, t, do, t. I was singing a little flat. Uh, but again, we that sounds like this. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, t. And then we, do, t, skipping all the way up to t. And then, so that's a major seventh interval. So we have basically all the intervals starting from do are either major intervals or they're perfect intervals. There's no minor intervals starting from do in the major scale. So we have major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, and major seventh, okay? And by the way, if you're in the stream, make sure you hit that thumbs up button so that more people can check this out. Let's get a bunch of likes on this. Anyway, let's keep going. So the last interval that we're going to sing or hear is going to be the octave. So octave is just when you sing from do to do, but do higher, <laughs> the higher version of do. So do, do. And there is intervals past that, but that's kind of out of the scope of this beginning video that we're doing here. Um, so the way that we kind of hear this interval is just going do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, 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 mi. Now octave, especially if you hear someone play it, it should be pretty obvious. That one's a fairly easy interval to hear. But actually, one of the songs in that whole song system I was mentioning is uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. It's like, somewhere over the rainbow. Da, da. That's the octave. But we're just going to, again, hear it in the context of the key. Do, do. OK, so now, if you've been kind of confused uh, on how to really hear these intervals and be able to sing them, uh, I want to give you a few tips that really, really, really helped me um, to get this down. By the way, the cool thing about all this stuff is that not only is it like the most valuable skill you can develop, but you can practice it basically anywhere. Like I used to practice um, and still do sometimes. I used to practice like singing intervals and uh, different ear training exercises like while driving to school or something or driving to the grocery store. <laughs> Um, you can practice this stuff anywhere. You don't need your guitar or whatever instrument you play. So anyway, um, the key to this is something called using the ghost note method. So what does this mean? For example, if we want to sing uh, any interval that's past the major second, because the major second is the smallest interval that we're going to be covering in this video, but any of the wider intervals, what we do is we sing the scale starting from the note that, we, that we're starting on, the beginning note, and we sing to the interval. And then we actually kind of ghost all the notes in between. So if that's confusing, I'll show you right now. So let's say you're having trouble hearing a major third, which is do to me. Do me, right? So the way that you're going to practice this is you're going to sing do, re, mi. So you're going to sing the entire scale from do to mi. And then you're going to do this a couple times. Do, re, mi, do, re, mi. Great. That's, that should be in your head pretty good by now. Then the next thing you do is you turn re into a ghost note because re is not really the note we want to sing. We just want to sing do, mi, be able to hear that really easily. So you sing something like this. Do, re, mi, do, re, mi. So re is like super quiet. I'm still singing in a little bit so that I can hear it, 
but I'm not singing anywhere near as loud as the the two notes that I really want to sing, the ones that I want to hear, do and me. And I'm accenting do, re, mi, because now those two notes are kind of starting to stick out more in my mind. Do, mi. So then once you practice that a few times, do, re, mi, do, re, mi, then you can try to attempt to go like this. Do, mi. So there, I didn't sing re at all. I was singing in my head. It was audiating in my head. That's, that's a good word for you all to remember. Audiate. So that's what all this stuff is, is about, actually. It's being able to hear something in your head without singing it at all, without having any kind of outside reference. So uh, if you're here watching this, then try doing that a couple times. Try singing do, me, but when you sing it, uh, if you're if you can't do it yet, then do this ghost note method. We're gonna go do, re, me, do, re, me, do, me, do, me, do, me, do, me, do, me, do, me. Now that interval is like that's really, really ingrained in my head now you know it's not that interval is not going anywhere so now you can take that piece of information that do to me sound do me now whenever you hear a major third interval it'll kind of sound like that it'll sound like do to me that's what like whenever i hear a major third interval there's actually other major third intervals that are found in the major scale but they always sound like do to me mostly, unless it's in a little more complicated, but unless it, it's in the context of a key where it's not do to me. But if I just hear a major third interval in a vacuum, just those two notes, it'll sound like do to me, at least for me. So uh, let's try that with like one, un uh, one or two other intervals. So let's take one that's even harder than that. Uh, let's take, do to soul. So now this is getting uh, pretty far. So do re mi fa sol, do sol. So by what you've gotten out of this so far, you could probably take a guess as to what we're going to do here. So we're going to sing do all the way up the scale to sol because we want to be able to sing and hear do sol, do sol. And what we're going to do is we're going to go do, re, mi, fa, sol. So in between do and sol, we have re, mi, and fa. So what we're going to do is now we're going to turn all re, mi, and fa into ghost notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol. Do, re, mi, fa, sol. Do, so now I got rid of them. Now they're completed ghost notes. Do, re, so, do, so, do, so, do, so, do, so. Perfect fifth. Now you know that's what a perfect fifth sounds like, right? So this is, it's really, um, it's, it, anybody can do this. Like, I don't care how old you are. I, I don't care if you're 10 years old or, if you're 70 years old, you can probably do this. This is not some kind of like magical wizardry to be able to hear uh, music and know what it is without even having to pick up a guitar. This is a great thing. You know, when, when I'm learning a song, uh, I can probably learn most of it just by listening to it a few times. And then by the time I want to sit down and uh, play it on guitar, uh, I got most of it worked out. I don't have to spend that much time like with my actual guitar trying to learn the thing let's do one other uh interval and then i want to get to the last exercise in the cover of the stream and then uh maybe take some questions if you guys want to and then uh, we'll wrap it up so the last exercise uh sorry let's do one more interval first then we'll get to the last exercise so let's try um uh, let's try major sixth 
interval. So that would be which, uh, what solfege notes? Do to la, right? Do, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. Do, la. Okay, so now we're just going to ghost all the notes in between do and la. So do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. Do, la. Do, la. Do, la. And there you go. That's a major sixth. So one thing that I recommend uh, for you all to practice this is to maybe just take one or two intervals a day and and spend you don't have to spend that much time doing this really uh maybe 10 minutes if you spend 10 or even five minutes a day practicing this kind of thing uh, you'll probably have them all down every single interval in the major scale in uh, a week or two <laughs> if you're if you're just a little consistent with it and and make sure to get that few minutes in a day so what i would do is take something like the major second and the major third. So just the first two intervals on the scale. Do to re, do to me. Do re, do me. And I would practice just singing those two intervals a few times that day. So you really, really know those two intervals. And then the next day, I would take a do to fa and do to sol. So now take the next two in it. So do, fa, do, sol. Do, fa, do, sol. And do the same thing. Do, re, mi, fa. Uh, sorry, I messed that one up. Do, fa, do, fa. Do, re, mi, fa. Do, re, mi, fa. Do, fa. Same thing with do, so. Do, re, mi, fa, sol. Do, so do so do fa do so and then once you get comfortable like when you don't have to ghost the notes eventually eventually you can just start to hear supernaturally those things uh especially if you try to make yourself do a little bit faster try to eventually when you don't have to cut out those ghost notes now so yeah and then uh, take do to sol and then, uh, sorry, do to la and then do to t and do those. And then eventually in your 10 minutes or five minutes that you're practicing, you can sing all the intervals. And then once you do that a couple of days, you'll be able to do it really, really easily. Now, uh, if you're, I want to try something with you all, actually. What, I want to try now the other way around. So you're going to recognize the interval that I play, okay? And we're going to do this sort of like the way I was just saying a practice of singing. Um, so if you're in chat and you want to chime in on what interval you think I'm playing, uh, that would be awesome. So this is going to be really easy. Why? Because I'm only going to, I'm going to limit it to just two intervals. So I'll do major second and major third. This is the, a really good way to start with recognizing these intervals as well. Um, you don't want to try to start doing all of them at the same time. Uh, that's going to be really, really hard. I mean, you could do that, I guess. But you want to try to just limit yourself to like two options, maybe three options. But for most people, I find two options is the best thing. So there's only going to be two intervals. There's going to be do to re, which is going to sound, I'm going to hide my guitar too, so you can't cheat and look at the guitar to see what I'm playing. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be do to re, which sounds like this. And then do to me, which sounds like this. So do re, do me. Okay, so... Now, let's do this for two minutes or something. Let's see if you all can, can test your ear a little bit, what you've learned so far in the stream. All right, so here's the first interval. I'll play it a couple times so you can hear it. All right. 
right. So yes, Jamie got it right in the chat. <laughs> uh, that it would be, I'll just wait one second, just in case you haven't gotten it yet. It's a major third. Good. So let's uh, now I'll play the next one. So the answer to that one is major second. So like I said, this should be pretty easy. <laughs> um, we just got two options and probably I'm gonna play the other one <laughs> after. Um, so let's do, one, let's do two more and then I may add one, inter, one other interval in just to make it a little teeny tiny bit harder. Yeah, so that that would be a correct answer too, Michael. Uh, double augmented unison. <laughs> Thank you very much, S. Bueno. I think I know who that is, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm glad the videos helped you out. So play it one one more time. So that's a major second interval, okay? And then uh, one more, and then we'll add in perfect fourth. I think that might be a good idea. Okay, okay. Because my uh, sister-in-law's family's name is Bueno, and I know a lot of them are subscribed to the channel, so. Uh, thank you. Thank you for checking out the videos. Okay. Well, uh, sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to the ear training. So that one is a Major third, do mi, do mi. Cool. So if you got that right, congratulations. You just, if you've never done this before, you just freaking recognized music by ear. You're like a crazy, perfect pitch genius already. <laughs> well, you're on your way to being, anyway. By the way, uh, just a little teeny tiny side rant. People like, somehow I think you need like perfect pitch to have really good ears and stuff like a Jacob Collier. Um, while having perfect pitch is great, you definitely don't need perfect pitch. This is a skill you can work on. Actually, um, a lot of people would argue that having relative pitch, especially if it's really well developed, is a lot better than having perfect pitch because you kind of have to understand the context of the notes that you're hearing to have good relative pitch. Um, and like someone like Rick Beato, he has uh, videos on the subject too, but he has really unbelievable relative pitch that's super duper fast. So it can be, if you work on it for especially a couple of years, uh, you can get your ears really, really good, really fast. Um, and you don't need perfect pitch. So uh, I got some alarm here going off. All right, let's add in one more interval. So now we're going to have three options. We're going to have major second, major third, and perfect fourth. So now it's not just like one or the other. You got to pick between those three. So perfect fourth sounds like this. It's do to fa, do fa, do fa, do re mi fa, do fa. I keep saying a little flat. Do, re, mi, fa, do, fa. So we have do, re, do, mi, and do, fa. So let's do a couple more and then 
we will do one more thing and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. So what is this interval? Play both notes at the same time too, so you can hear it. So that would be a major third. Do, mi, do, re, mi, do, mi. Okay, next one. So I actually accidentally gave it away. <laughs> So that was a perfect fourth, do to fa. Yes, good job. Yes, perfect, perfect fourth. Next one, let's do three more. So that was a major third. Do, mi. Oh, my guitar is showing up a little tiny bit. <laughs> no guitar cheating. <laughs> also, if you're watching, don't play it on your guitar. Some people do that. Don't play it yet. Just use your ears. This is ear trading. Okay. the interval play at the same time that's a interesting one so that is do to re major second uh let's do i think two more That's do to fa, perfect fourth. Do, re, mi, fa, do, fa. That one is one that I had trouble with for a while, by the way. Perfect fourths and fifths, they sound kind of similar to each other. Um, one more. sounds cool you play it play it harmonically so that was a perfect fourth again so if you thought i was just going to change it because it was a, the next question well you were wrong i played the same one again because that's what i wanted to do <laughs> okay okay so now that you've uh done that now that you've gotten really good at singing every single interval in the major scale Starting from do, do, re, do, mi, do, fa, do, sol, do, la, do, ti, do, do, right? Get really good at that. Now, and, and of course, uh, recognizing it too, this, by the way, that is what uh, these apps would be pretty useful for, is, is you do want to do some recognition as well. But if you can sing these, you'll be able to recognize them with no problem, because then you just you just think of how does it sound in comparison to the intervals that I know what it's saying. So the next thing would be to actually start singing some intervals starting from not from do. So for example, this interval. Re, fa. So that interval is a minor third interval. Now, there's going to be tons of different intervals in here, and we're not going to cover every single one of them in the stream. But I just want to give you the idea so you can start working on it. But maybe in another stream, we'll uh, kind of build off this one. But you want to start singing some intervals that don't start on do. And really, what you have to do is actually figure out, like, 
two different intervals. Because, for example, if I want to sing re fa, well, I have to know how to start on re. And the way that I know how to start on re is by starting on do. So if I want to go re fa, I have to go, I have to start on do, because do is always going to be like the strongest one. If, if you know where do is, and you can hear where do is, then you're going to be good all the time. That's that's kind of like the whole key to this whole thing is really, really having do super strong in your mind. So I'll be able to figure out what re is because I'll sing do, re. So I go, okay, that's re, re. And by the way, I kind of think specifically about re. I think of it in relation to do. I know all this stuff is in relation to do, but... Uh, like if you're singing the scale downwards, do, uh, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Re kind of wants to fall down to do. Re, do. Um, so I'm always kind of hearing re in relation to do. So I have to figure out the interval from do to re. So do, re, re. And then if I want to sing re to fa, well, I have to do the same thing that we're doing before. Re, mi, fa, and so do, re, re, mi, fa, re, mi, fa, re, fa, re, fa, re, fa. Same thing uh, if we want to do a different interval. Let's say we wanted to do an interval from mi to sol. This is another minor third interval. So we have to figure out how to start a me. So do, re, mi, do, mi. So now I know that's me. Me. But I want to go me, so, me, so. So I got to go me, fa, so. So do, re, mi. That's where we're starting. Mi, fa, so, mi, fa, so. Now I'm turning that fa into the ghost note, right? Because I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to sing fa. I don't care that much about fa. I'm just using fa to get me to the next, to the to the note that I want to get to. I'm using it as like a little stepping stone to get there. Mi, fa, so, mi, fa, so. Mi, so, mi, so, and then that's it. Now I know that that's a minor third as well. Um, you'll be more comfortable with what the names of, or sorry, yeah, the the actual like interval quality, if it's a major third, minor third, uh, by just studying a little bit the major scale. Um, and honestly, this, this will really help you <laughs> understand all, like memorize, all the intervals in the major scale. Because to me, uh, music theory and ear training, they all kind of work hand in hand. They um, they can't really exist without the other. If, if you don't have good ears, well, your, your theory knowledge could be good, I guess, but you're just not going to be able to use it very well. <laughs> ear training is really the, the key to having really good theory knowledge and actually being able to use it to do something, right? So, yeah, doing these different intervals. Hey, Truth Guitar Method, Joel. Um, you guys should all check out his channel, Truth Guitar Method, especially if you're more of a beginner player. He has really good content. He's a super nice guy. Um, he gave me a shout out on his channel a couple times. So <laughs> Got to repay it. But, uh, no, he's, his channel is awesome. Check, check him out for sure. Um, so, yeah. Getting those different intervals down, not starting from do, that's sort of the next progression. So you got the interval starting from do. Now you have all the intervals starting from any note that isn't do. Um, and then the last thing that I'll talk about here is singing the triads in the major scale. That's really, really going to start to get you super far into your ear training. So really all you're doing is singing three different notes, um, singing three different notes and two different intervals. <laughs> so for example, 
the first triad there's so there's if you don't know too much about the major scale uh how the chords gonna work basically every single note in the major scale allows you to build a triad chord off of that note so there's seven different notes in the major scale so there's seven different triads that you can build in a major scale and seven different triads that we can sing too uh and if you sing these you're gonna be automatically singing a bunch of different intervals and the best part is that you're going to be hearing them all in a different context in the major scale so for example the first one we would start with we've actually already gone over a couple both of the intervals that would be in the first triad in the major scale that's kind of cool part so the first chord in the major scale would be a major triad and that sounds like this do me so so me do so as you can see we're skipping a couple notes there we're skipping re and we're skipping fa so we're going do re mi do re mi and then mi fa so mi fa so do mi so mi do so Singing them up and down like that will really, really help you to, to develop your ears like crazy. So do that a couple times. Do, re, mi, fa, so. Do, re, mi, fa, so. Do, mi, so, mi, do. That sounds like this if I play on the guitar. Do, mi, so, mi, do, mi, so, mi, do. So a lot of times you, you actually see all these structures too in like melodies for solos and, and songs and things. They're, they're all built on triads in the major scale, not just uh, when you actually hear a chord progression. It's like... I mean, you, th this will really help with that, too, recognizing chords. And that's going to be in another stream. Um, or maybe I'll just do a full-blown video on that. But um, once you know these solfege things, like, really, really well, it's going to help you a ton to recognize not just melodies by ear, but also chord progressions. And that's one thing that... Uh, I, I thought was like crazy, like impossible. There's no way that I could learn how to hear chords um, and just figure them out by ear without having to pull up a lead sheet or something for a song. But it is possible for anybody to do, uh, in my opinion, and you just got to practice a little bit. You just uh, And the cool thing is that at first, all this stuff seems really, really hard and, and it's uncomfortable. Uh, I remember it's like super uncomfortable when I started, but as you get like a little tiny bit better at it, the feeling you get when you, you're realizing like, wait a second, I can actually recognize some intervals, but like just completely by ear without having to refer to my instrument or, you know, I can sing, sing them. That kind of thing is like, you start to get this really satisfying feeling like, wow, I could not do that at all before like z couldn't do it zero and now i can't and to me that's like sort of the whole charm of of uh getting better at stuff with an instrument just a musicianship in general is being able to do something that you weren't able to do before and when you are able to do something you weren't able to do before you know that you objectively got better like that's it you objectively got better um, if you were able to do something that you weren't able to do before. So that's the one chord. Do, mi, so, mi, do. Now, and the reason I call it the one chord is, again, that is the triad that is based on the first note in the scale, which is do. So we stack third intervals on top of that. We have uh, do to me as a third. It's a major third, and then mi to fa is a minor third. Do, mi, so. Now, 
let's try a couple more. And then um, if you guys have any questions about whatever, anything I'm going to do with music, you know, answer some of them. And then uh, we'll wrap it up here, all right? Been at, wow, we've been going for 45 minutes already, actually. Got seven people in here. Say what's up. All right, so next one is going to be the two chord, right? It makes sense. We start with one, let's go to two. So the two chord sounds like this. Here's the one chord and then two chord for context. And the solfege syllables for that are re, fa, la. So again, that's one of the intervals. One of them is the interval we sang before. Re, fa. So we start on re. Re, mi, fa. We skip mi. Ghost, ghost that me note. Re, mi, fa. And then we have to go up another third from fa. So fa, skip sol, and go up to la. So re, fa, fa. Uh, yeah, re, fa, fa, sol, la. Fa, sol, la. Fa, sol, la. Fa, la, re, fa, la. That's a minor triad because re to fa is a minor third interval. And then fa to la is a major third interval. By the way, if you have like some kind of note, notepad with you or whatever, you're on Microsoft Word or something taking some notes, uh, if you don't know this already, make sure you know. Uh, so all the third intervals, let's cover that really quick. All the third intervals in the major scale, starting from every note. Do to me is a major third. Re to fa is a minor third. Mi to sol is a minor third. Fa to la is a major third. Sol to ti is a major third. La to do is the next one. That's a third starting from... La, la to do is a minor third. And then the last third interval we can find is actually T to re. Uh, that would sound like this. T, re. Um, so if we sang through, at the, sorry, T to re is a minor third. So we you, know, you actually practice singing all these. Do, mi, re, fa, mi, so, fa, la. Sol, ti, la, do, ti, re, do. <laughs> that was all of them kind of in sequence. And of course, that's something that you uh, hear a lot as well. That's a, just a nice sequence. You might hear someone play in a solo or in, in a melody. That's what, that's what that sounds like if you sing that. So, um, yeah, there are so many different things that we could talk about here. The stream will go on forever and ever. But so let's just do that, review that one more time, and then we'll do one more chord, and then we'll start to wind us down. So the two chord. Re, fa, la, fa, re. Re, mi, fa, fa, sol, la, re. Fa, fa, la, re, fa, la, fa, re. So, so far we've covered the one chord. Do, mi, sol, mi, do. And then the two chord. Re, fa, la, fa, re. And then let's try, let's try, let's try the three chord. Three chord might be a little tricky. So, Again, by the way, one chord's major chord, two chords, minor chord. Yeah, just so that we're on the same page, we're all reviewing anybody who might be jumping in late. Um, and of course, this is the kind of thing you probably want to rewind <laughs> and start from the beginning. So the three chord is going to be starting from what solfege syllable? It's me, right? Because that's the third of solfege syllable. Do, re, mi, one, two, three, mi. So the three chord is going to be like this. Mi, sol, ti, sol, mi. And that's going to be another 
minor triad. Same process. So you should start picking up on this. You know, it can go a little bit quicker. Me, uh, yeah, me, fa, sol. So to sing the first two notes of triad, me, fa, sol, me, sol, me, sol, me, fa, sol, me, sol. And now to sing from sol to T, we go, so la ti so la ti so i'm singing a la real quiet so la ti so now i didn't say it at all it doesn't i mouth it so ti so me so ti so me that's it <laughs> so if you practice just the stuff that we covered in this live stream uh, you're gonna just you're gonna start naturally hearing these things in the music that that you're learning, or just listening to on the radio. Like you'll get it to a point where you're just gonna naturally hear, oh, that was a do mi sol mi do, that was do mi sol ti do ti sol mi do. <laughs> um, so if you sang through every single one of the triads in the major scale, it'll sound like this. Do, mi, sol, re, fa, la, mi, sol, ti, fa, la, do, sol, ti, re, la, do, mi, ti, re, fa, do. <laughs> uh, so that ti, re, fa one is uh, if you, again, if you know the major scale a bit, just the theory behind it, that's the diminished chord. So, T, Re, Fa, Re, T. So now you're learning how to sing diminished chords and major chords and minor chords. So that's all of your assignments after this, uh, after this live stream. So practice, like let's recap everything we did. You practice singing all the intervals from Do, then start, uh, then practice all the intervals that you can find just explore too don't make this like such a strict thing uh, i think it's important to just kind of mess around and, and try to see the different interval combinations you can come up with but starting from notes that aren't do re fa mi so uh what about like other ones like uh re so Re, sol, that's that's actually perfect fourth interval, but now it's not like the other perfect fourth we sang, which is do, fa, this one's re, sol. There's a bunch of different perfect fourths. So all different intervals that you can find uh, that don't start on do. And then starting, uh, and then singing through all of the, major minor and diminished triads all the triads in the major scale and that alone will just completely blow out of the water trying to memorize like a song or whatever <laughs> the first note of a song <laughs> to um, be able to recognize an interval you'll start recognizing those intervals on apps like there's no tomorrow if, if you can sing these things because if you can hear it you can sing it that's what it is so uh, if anybody has any questions uh, about this or about anything else that I've covered on my channel or that I haven't covered, you go ahead and drop them in the chat. Um, we'll hang out for another couple minutes and then uh, we'll call it. What's up, Will? You're part of the first Jamsville live stream. This is fun. I'm going to start doing this more. So uh, I was kind of nervous beforehand because there's no editing or anything on this stuff. But, um, but I think it's gone pretty well so far. I think people, you guys seem to like it. So. I guess I'll play a little bit while uh, if while any questions come in the chat.
Dallas weather is perfect right now. I think it was about 68 degrees outside. Very nice weather to run in. here if you want to support the channel and if you want to learn how to master the guitar fretboard make sure you head on over to jamsville.com this course is the jamsville gps uh, fretboard fundamentals course it's really really going to help you out if you are not comfortable at all with the guitar fretboard and you feel like you're stuck soloing in the same spots in the fretboard all the time i designed this course really to get you just going all over the place in the fretboard and really mastering the fretboard and understanding it for real, which um, unfortunately, I think a lot of guitarists just don't, don't have that. You know, they just uh, have learned using tabs and all this kind of stuff and, and memorizing patterns, but they don't learn the notes. And I want all the people who hang out and watch my channel to not be like that. I want them to <laughs> To actually, you know, be musicians and know the guitar fretboard for real. So if you, uh, you know, go ahead and pick up the course, you'll be supporting the channel and you'll be getting a giant value. You really be able to, you take your guitar playing to the next level. I, I really believe it. It's, it's. Uh, there's a few people who've gotten the course already and uh, have gotten some great feedback from it. Um. So really go check it out. If you're on the fence, um, I, I'd be very happy to answer any questions. If you uh, contact or leave a comment on any of my videos, or you can contact me through my website email. Um, but yeah, so go 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 pick up the course, really. It's, it's really going to help you guys out. But all right, thank you so much for checking out the stream. It was a lot of fun. We'll definitely be doing this some more. And uh, yeah, take care, everybody.